Tonight we're going to pick up in our second lesson from 1 Corinthians 13. And uh, last Wednesday night we, we uh, gave the first lesson on this, um, on this chapter. Of course, it's known as the love chapter. And together we love. We're talking about that throughout the month. And so tonight I'm going to, I'm going to pick up on the second uh, half of that lesson. We only got through the first three verses. And um, so tonight we'll pick up with uh, verse 4. I'm going to uh, read it in the NASB. And uh, we'll start with verse 4. And uh, it says, love is patient, love is kind, and is not jealous. Love does not brag and is not arrogant, does not act unbecomely. It does not seek its own, is not provoked, does not take into account a wrong suffered, does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. But if there are gifts of prophecy, they will be done away. If there are tongues, they will cease. If there is knowledge, it will be done away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when the perfect comes, the partial will be done away. When I was a child, I used to speak like a child, think like a child, reason like a child. When I became a man, I did away with childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I will know fully, just as I also have been fully known. But now faith Hope, love, abide these three, but the greatest of these is love. And so I'm going to, uh, the second half of this lesson speaks about the characteristics of genuine love. What are the characteristics that Paul is speaking about in this chapter that are genuine characteristics of love? Of course, Jesus is genuine love personified. I mean, he exemplifies all the characteristics uh, that he wants uh, us to uh, have in our life. Paul's listing of the attributes of love accurately uh, describes the Lord, and his goal, of course, is every member of the church to have those attributes in their life, to portray what Paul is speaking that God already has, that he is. And so uh, he says in verse 4, charity suffereth long. The first uh, characteristic of love is long-suffering, long-suffering. Love uh, puts up with many things for a long time. That's what it does. It puts up with many things. Don't look sideways at anyone beside you or anything. Love puts up. With many things for a long time. It's long suffering. Uh, Paul's speaking about it in this way. The Lord has modeled the appropriate behavior of the kind of love that aims to benefit the ones loved. Uh, the Apostle Peter, he, he wrote of God's long suffering during the days of Noah, uh, which preserved humanity. In spite of the great wickedness of that day, you can read about that in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 20, where the, Peter's writing about how God's mercy, his long-suffering love for people, uh, he could have just eliminated mankind. But no, he gave a way of escape. And Noah, here's the plan, Noah, build an ark. I, I, I want to spare mankind. Uh, in the last days, God still is exhibiting great long-suffering towards arrogance, rebellion, unbelievers who mock him, deny him, deny his even his very existence. But he's patient based upon his love. Uh, he does not want, the Bible says, any to perish. But that all would come to repentance. Can you... Can you think of that in the terms of the ones who mock God and don't believe God and, 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 and speak down to 
the, uh, the whole sense of Bible and Christianity, yet God's love is for them as well. Not one person does he want to perish. Not one. Though many will not take advantage of the love of God or the offer of his love, he still extends time to every person an opportunity to respond to his love. The Bible says he gives man a space and a time to repent. God's love does not uh, eliminate us uh, upon every wrongdoing. <laughs> His love is the opposite. He's trying to embrace and draw us closer and, and allow his love to work in our love. Our life, charity, Paul said, suffereth long. Love suffereth long. It's a characteristic of genuine love. Your kids act up, you don't take them back. Put them on eBay or. No, you persevere through. And your, your goal is to someday it will get better. <laughs> someday. Long suffering. Suffering long. Uh, the second characteristic that Paul speaks about is kindness. The, the, the word kind in 1 Corinthians 13 and 4 means to show uh, oneself useful. To act uh, benevolently, uh, the love of God that's within us to help others in a benevolent way. Those uh, around us that need help. Even those that oppose the things of God should be recipients of his kindness. Should be recipients of our kindness. Well, I, I can't be bothered. I, I don't have time for that. Or... Uh, you know, when, when they decide, make up their mind, well, then I'll, I'll give them time. No, that's not what, that's not what uh, the love of God, the characteristic of kindness through his love does. It goes beyond. It goes the extra mile. It, it stretches beyond what we would normally think would be the norm. The love of God manifested itself in kindness through all areas of society from uh, the adulterous woman in John chapter 8 to the ruler of the Jews in John chapter 3. It's in like manner that, uh, that everyone should have the same act of kindness. The Lord didn't, he didn't it immediately eliminate people because of, of the things in their life that were not proper. No, he did the opposite. He did the opposite. He went to the ones that no one else Wanted to go to. He, he was accused of spending too much time with sinners. The accusation that's brought against him is he spends too much time with sinners. The, the kindness of God. Oh God, let genuine love, long-suffering kindness radiate through our lives. Thirdly, humility. You'll see also in Verses 4 and 5, charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Uh, in a world that is so concerned with looking out for number one, that's oneself, it is refreshing to encounter someone that's not consumed with self-promotion or self-existence, but rather the, the love of God shining through their life in humility. Jesus set the pattern of, of being confident enough of his own self-worth that he could express his love to others without seeking some recognition for himself. He, he, he's the example for us to follow. He is. Jesus was, he was certain enough of his position as God manifested in the flesh that he did not, the Bible says, did not make himself of any reputation, but rather took upon himself the form of a servant, became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Uh, uh, consequently, we should 
we should become so confident in our place in God that it's not, we're not in a place of worrying about credit or recognition. But the humility of God's love is shining through us in such a way that it's portrayed to every person we come in contact, whether it's our brothers and sisters in the Lord or people who are unbelievers at the moment. The humility of love. Together we love. It's long-suffering. It's kind. And it's humble. Next, it's selflessness. Uh, You'll notice in this verse 5, along with humility, unconditional love produces a selflessness in an individual. We, we, uh, We possess God's agape love. We act without regard to whether or not it will benefit us. Calvary's Calvary's sacrifice made it possible for the church to spend eternity with the Lord, eternity worshiping God. However, the purpose of a sacrifice was to save us and then bless others through us. That's the purpose. He didn't just save me for me. He didn't just save you for you. He saved you so there was a selflessness from you that that you would allow God's love to work through you. See, when we do the right thing for the right reason without considering a personal benefit, God takes care of the rest. He has has a way of keeping score that's way different than us. The blessings of God can shine down on your life in times when you don't even know, when you're not even expecting it. Because something is genuine out of your life. I'm thankful for the church tonight. That genuine selflessness. That that there's times when you just give, give, give. Expecting nothing in return. And yet God takes notice. I'll just give give an example. How, you know, all all the, the wonderful Sunday school teachers. Your salaries are so great. <laughs> every Sunday, every week, preparing, giving of yourself. And it may be 10, 15, 20 years, maybe longer down the road before you see the fruit of what God has done through your life because you sacrificially gave of your time. There's no telling. I, I, I always think of the story of Brother Linton, <laughs> Sunday school teachers that retired because of Brother Linton. We get in this conversation every time we get together. It's wonderful. And look at the ministry that God has produced because someone gave of time and gave of time and gave of time. The the selflessness of love is only seen down the road at times. Uh, The genuine characteristic of love of rejoicing in the right things. He says in verse 6, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Uh, Many people find pleasures in the wrong things. Uh, Some individuals not only do wrong themselves, but they're, they're amused by observing the wickedness of others. This obviously seems to be the foundation upon which the modern entertainment world is built. The, the Hollywood productions rely on exploiting nudity and profanity and immorality and other wickedness because many people find pleasure in the evils perpetrated by others. But yet, uncontrolled wantonness exists throughout much of the modern culture. And they, they don't know what they're really missing. And Paul says, genuine love rejoiceth in, not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. The love that, that, you, that you show because God finds great delight 
in you. He finds great delight that what he's done in your life is being shown to someone else. Oh, God delights in that. He gets so excited about one sinner that repents. That's what he says. And so every time your, your life is showing and, and you just keep doing the right things, you just keep doing the right things, and people are watching your life. I, I was having a conversation with someone just this past week, and, and, and I, I was telling them about watching their life, and, and the person responded, I, I never realized someone was watching what I'm doing. I said, oh, there's always people watching what you're doing. Just keep doing the right thing. Just keep doing the right thing. And God's love will shine through your life. Uh, Hallelujah. It's not rejoicing, hallelujah, in the iniquity of the world, but no, rather what God has done through your life. Let it be the reason to rejoice. Redeeming redeeming people, changing lives and transforming hearts, giving people purpose. Let that be what's rejoiced in. Let it be what's rejoicing. Isn't it exciting to watch someone's life be changed? You watch what God can do in just a short period of time and the excitement that it brings. Oh, I got excited this week. Oh, I I thank God for what he can do in a person's life uh, from what a person used to be to what they are now uh, and to watch the transformation. Let yourself rejoice in the truth. uh, Hallelujah, that God's love shines through you. Oh, genuine characteristics of love. Next he says in verse 7, beareth all things. Believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Uh, The characteristic of love, it's very strong in support. Agape love is not fragile. It's not a wilting plant. It's not some weak, stemmed plant. (laughs) No, no. Agape love's strong. It's, It's got a strong support. The love of God is not easily run over, uh, insulting words or, or, or imagined hurts, uh, that they're not strong enough to, to get rid of his love. Paul writes it, what can separate me from the love of God? And he gives a nice long list, nothing can separate me from the love of God. A genuine love, let it be that that's a that's what happens no matter opposition or persecution or, or what comes to your life. There's a strength in the love of God that you have in your heart. Together we love. How much a person abides in his love, pressures, problems, whatever comes, whether it's at work or at home. Or you, may, you may feel like, you know, you're not, it's not going well, or you're having a difficult time, or it's a rough, a rough patch in your life. But you allow the, the strength of the love of God to shine through. And it will amaze people of how you made it through. While we respond with things like this, it's just the mercy of God. It's just the grace of God. It's just the love of God. Oh, they all come from the same source. They all come. It's the strength of genuine love. Bears all things. Believes all things. Hopes all things. Endures all things. Not certain things. Everything. It'll get you through it all. It'll get you all the way through anything that's happening. Love is strong in faith. See, a disappointment is a natural part of life. It's called life. Our plans do not always come together. They don't always happen the way we think they should. We do not always meet our goals and, and aims in life. But love keeps us pressing forward toward the ultimate victory. Even when our life is full of frustrations, the strength 
of the power of his love will allow your faith to keep moving ahead. Don't look over your shoulder. Don't look back. Don't turn around. Don't give up. Don't change direction. Keep your eyes focused on the strength of his love that's in your life, and it'll take you all the way through no matter what frustration you're in. It's the way it is. It's strong. The characteristic of his love, love is strong in faith. Can you imagine Simon, Simon Peter, his failures, his, his turning and denying the Lord just within a very short period of time of the Lord saying, that's what you're going to do. And yet the Lord, the Lord presented Peter with another opportunity. Peter could have looked at it like, I don't, I don't deserve it. I'm a failure. Look what I did a few days ago. Look what's taken place. Look what my life's been. Look at how I, I've messed up. Look at this. Look at that. No, no, no. That's what Peter could have done. No, rather, he put his eyes on moving forward. And he marched right to the day of Pentecost. And he preached the message. That's what he did. This is just within a few short days of his failure. But there was a love of God that allowed Peter's faith. Can you imagine? All of the Lord's disciples fall asleep in Gethsemane. Could you not just pray an hour? Nope. We're tired. <laughs> Snoozing. Your praying puts us right to sleep. The Lord didn't give up on them. He didn't say, well, this was a bad, this was a bad crop that I picked. This, this was not a good group. These 11 are, oh, my goodness, this is terrible. No, that's not what he did. He put the hands of the church in their hands. He put the, the, the future of what was going to happen in their hands. That's a love of God that's, that, I mean, our faith, that should encourage someone in here tonight no matter what has happened and no matter what fault has taken place and, and no matter how many times you've messed up and, and no matter how many times you, uh, you, you've, you've taken a step backward, get your eyes focused uh, on the love of God and the strength that he has in the faith of you. Uh, hallelujah. And allow it to take you to the next level in him. He hasn't given up on you. Oh, the characteristic of the love of God, it's strong in faith. He showed it to Peter. He showed it to the disciples. This kind of love planted in the hearts of God's people explains why individuals keep believing and keep working, even though sometimes the circumstances are not beneficial, profitable. They're not convenient. But people just start, I'm going to keep going ahead. I got knocked down, but I'm going to get back up, and I'm going to take another step towards the Lord. I've had a rough week, but I'm going to reestablish myself in God's presence, and I'm going to go ahead. I'll tell you what, that's the love of God that will take you all the way. The enemy will condemn you. God never condemns you. God convicts you, but he'll never condemn you. The love of God will convict you and I and take us to the next step of what he has in us. Oh. Huh. Thank you, Jesus, for the characteristic of the strength of faith. Uh, uh, next characteristic, and uh, I'll try to wind it down. Strong in endeavor. When he says, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. There's an endeavoring. Listen, there's a lot of, there's a lot of sweaty labor in serving God. Long hours, hard work, great sacrifice. Sometimes you might even feel like your efforts are, are fruitless. 
man, that was kind of pointless. I don't feel like I got any farther in prayer today than I did yesterday. We go through these times in our life. The sacrifices that are sometimes, they're not unfamiliar to those who, who have taken a serious commitment that I'm going to endeavor to the end. And, and they realize, you know, at, at certain points in my life, I went through something similar. But God took me through. God saw me through. And the endeavoring of God's love doesn't allow us, the characteristic of his love doesn't allow us to step back on our commitment. We, we're, we're not always looking for an easier way. We're just wanting to get to where God wants us to be. Endeavoring. That's what he's speaking about. Endureth all things. See, we do for love what no amount of money could purchase. Love makes it possible to tolerate what would otherwise be intolerable. Real love, real love, hallelujah, keeps you going. When the Energizer Bunny has long run out, God's love is still going. When it, when it, it appears like you should have given up by now, no, 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 you're still going. That's the endeavoring characteristic of the love of God. You realize how powerful his love is, and you just keep going. One day at a time, one step at a time. Sometimes it's one hour at a time. Maybe even less than that. Agape love can motivate us long after every natural ability has been utilized, has been I mean, it's run out long ago, the natural abilities. But the endeavoring love of God. Yeah. Characteristics of his love. What does those characteristics, what, what's the result of those, those characteristics of love? See, God's agape love is not some mushy emotion that is long on empty talk and and some woeful uh, performance or, or just, you know, uh, he, he's trying to impress someone. No. James clearly illustrates that the love of God, the result of those characteristics, puts us into action. Action. We could take testimonies tonight. I can guarantee you everybody in this room, at some point, you just felt in your heart to do something, to be a benefit for someone, not for your glory, not for recognition, just to be a blessing. I'll tell you what that is. That is the result of genuine love of God in your life. The agape love shining through when it seems like um, it would be just so easy not to be involved or so easy just to, to, to ignore what's happening. No, the real love produces a result uh, that benefits other people because of what God's love has done for you. Together we love. Together we love. See, God's love costs him the cross. It provided eternal life for you and I. His blessing is, is not all to be enjoyed by just some in the sweet by and by. No, his, his idea is to let that love shine through you while you're here. Oh. What does it do? It solves problems in life. Life consists of an unending series of problems. Have you kind of had that happen to you? I don't know if you're a list person, but you got three or four problems on your list to solve, and you're so excited when that's taken care of, only to find out there's more to add to the list. Sometimes before you even get those ones done, 
It's unending. That's, it's life. Life is full of unending problems, which we must deal with. And every solution seems to spawn its own chain of complications. It seems to, there, there's a problem that's always dangling in front of us at some point that we have to handle or deal with. And, and some people have to deal with huge problems, maybe at work or or in family, or in finance, or whatever the, whatever the case. And, but in spite of the compounding complications of problems, love does not resign and back away and say, I can't continue. No. The result of those characteristics of love in your life will take you through the ages. That's why people serve God decades. Upon decades, not just because they're stubborn. No, the love of God's been shining through their lives, the characteristics of God. And the result is, uh, no matter what's thrown my way, the problems of life are going to continue until we're taken up from this world. The enemy always tries to get people entangled. Paul writes about it, the affairs of this life, he says. Be not entangled with the affairs of this life. See, God saw the wickedness of man, and yet the problems that were on the earth, I mean, were incredible. Yet he said to Noah, I'm going to make an escape for people. Everybody that wants to get on the boat. Life is going to produce problems. Noah wasn't flawless. All right, you can read about Noah. Noah's got his own issues. He wasn't flawless. But love didn't demand a life that was unblemished. It just demanded someone that said, you know what, I'm going to tackle life's problems. Folks, it had never rained before. There was no plan on how to build a boat. A boat had never been built. It had never rained. And he's going to build a boat to carry the animals, <laughs> enough, enough food to take care of the animals the whole time they're on there, his family. I mean, the, the project was incredible. But Noah just, he tackled life's can you imagine how many times he wanted to give up on building the boat? <laughs> and I don't see a cloud in the sky. No, he just tackled life. Can you imagine how long he preached and no one responded? How many times he had church and no one got saved? <laughs> just him and his wife, his three sons and their wives got on the boat. That's it. And I, I think there would be a great opportunity for discouragement. <laughs> nope. Going to keep plugging. Just going to keep plugging. Going to keep going. Going to keep getting up. I'm going to put a few more boards on. I'm going to pitch it. I'm going to make sure it's taken care of. Yeah. The results of genuine love. No matter what problems come in life. Facilitates vision and understanding. Look what verse 12 says. For now we see through a glass darkly. But then face to face. Now I know in part. But then shall I know even as also I am known. The Holy Ghost infuses the heart with the love of God. His love changes the way that we see the world. The characteristics of love, the result of that, I mean, it facilitates a vision and an understanding that's not normal. It changes how you see the world. It changes how you see people, no matter what is happening. We learn to love in the way God loves. We develop an understanding of how he looks at people spiritually. And how sin has caused such issues in life 
but he looks at the hope, the hope of Calvary and the hope of the cross. And he looks at people as lost, but he's given them a plan and he's given them an option and a way out and an escape. True love, it generates a result in you that you look at life differently. Yeah. You can, you can, it's no trouble to tell who's got the love of God shining through their life. They look at life differently. It's not a drag. It's not a drag at all. Man, I'm just sick of my life. No, you, no, no, let the love of God shine through. You won't be sick of your life. It's an opportunity every day. Well, Pastor, you don't live my life. No, that's true. And you don't live mine. <laughs> oh, let the genuine characteristic of life, love shine through. It'll make you look at days differently. Facilitates a vision and an understanding. He says, when we, when we look through a glass darkly, but then face to face, I know in part, uh, I shall even, I shall know even as also I am known. In closing, the last one, the characteristics result in abiding forever, he says. Abiding forever. Now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity. Do you know even the pyramids of Egypt are crumbling? The masterpieces of artists, archi architects, there will come a point when there will be no more. You know, it's reported that in a cathedral in Europe, the old stained glass has thickened at the bottom as it has thinned at the top. <laughs> glass is super-cooled liquid. But given enough time, the flow towards, because of gravity, eventually becomes evident. And they, they look at these really old stained glass windows, and they're, they're now thicker at the bottom than they are at the top, deteriorating. And yet, Paul writes and says, That love will abide forever. It will not be outdone. It will not be diminished. I'm talking about the love of God. It, it doesn't run out. It doesn't change with generations. It doesn't change where people live. It's not based on any of those things. The greatest glories of man... Are, are, are going to be just faded into memories. But the, the love of God is going to keep shining through. When I'm dead and gone, the love of God is not going to change. No, it's not going to change. It's going to be the same. It was the same 100 years ago. It'll be the same until the Lord comes. The love of God doesn't change. The result of the characteristics of his love is it abides forever. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And Paul writes, and he's giving these, he even, he even goes to explain that, and he's obviously chapter 13 is in between chapter 12 and 14 of 1 Corinthians where it talks about the gifts of the Spirit. And he even talks about how the gifts of the Spirit will come to a close. Not the love of God. Not his love. Yep, prophecies are going to fail. Tongues are going to cease. The gifts are going to, even knowledge, he said, that's, that's it. The gift of knowledge is that they're all going to come to an end. But not his love. The power, powerful love of God. And that's the love that shines through you. Aren't you thankful for the love of God? Oh, I'm thankful for his love. 
That's what's got you and I to this point. That's what will take us all the way. Hallelujah. The love of God. Together we love. The Bible gives all kinds of examples. Sunday. Sunday we'll be preaching about Ruth. Powerful love story of Ruth. How that radiates through our lives. Just awesome. We'll also speak on Sunday night about the Good Samaritan. The love story of that parable. Who is the neighbor? See, this is the love of God that shines through you and I. Thank you, Jesus. Stand if you would. Thank God for his love. Thank God for his love. I thank God for his love. He's been so faithful to you and I. He's been so faithful to you and I. Oh, his love has has been so faithful to you and I. God, I thank you for your love. Would you just thank him right now for the love of God. Hallelujah, that he's bestowed upon you. He's showing you the love of God that's never changed. I thank you, Lord, for your love. The characteristics of your love, I'm so thankful, God. That's resulted in in helping me take care of life's problems. It helps me see each day differently. Oh, God, it's something that's always going to last. It never runs out, God. I thank you for the result of those characteristics of love. Oh, God, let them shine through my life. Let me be a channel, God, for your mighty power and your precious love to flow. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, the simplest of things sometimes God uses our life for just to let his love shine through It doesn't have to be some huge thing at times. Just let the love of God go through your life on a daily basis. He knows exactly what someone needs to hear. What someone needs to experience. What someone needs to have help with. He knows exactly. Realize this. Could God do it all on his own? Yes, he could. But very seldom does he just do it on his own. He loves to use his people. Not only is it a blessing to who it's for, but it's a blessing of who it's coming from. There's a a double benefit, a double blessing of the love of God. He wants people to see his love through you. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Let your blessing, God, be upon each person tonight. As we go our separate ways, God, we're learning, we're just learning about your love more and more. Things that people have heard before, we're just being reminded of them, how powerful it is. God, I pray in the rest of this week, you should tarry. Let your love shine through every person in this room, every person watching online. God, let your love shine through them. God, let it be... You, Lord, let each one be used for your glory. God, to be uplifting to you, to bless your name, to be, God, uh, an increase of your kingdom through each person in this room. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you tonight. Thank you for being in the house of the Lord. Amen.